Hello, Charles Mercier here. Let's look together at another good object, this time in ancient art at the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. This is a marble relief from the eastern side of the Roman Empire, carved around the second century CE. It shows scenes from a combat between two gladiators. It was probably made as a marker for someone's grave and remembers the gladiator fight that would have been part of the funeral games that were put on as part of the funeral observances in honor of the person who had died. In Epic, you remember, there were funeral games for Patroclus in the Iliad of Homer and funeral games for Anchises in the Aeneid, but it happened in real life too. This is a terracotta plaque for a grave near Athens from about 520 BC that shows the deceased laid out, his family and friends mourning him, and the chariot race that was held as part of the funeral. Our relief tells the story of the gladiator contest, like highlights from a football game. If we look closely at it, we can learn something about the different kinds of gladiators that there were, and different kinds of gladiator equipment, and the Latin vocabulary that names it. There were more than 20 different kinds of gladiators. All of them had different kinds of equipment and different techniques. In this contest, we have a mermillo against the provocator. Provocator means caller out, provocator, provoker, challenger. The name mermillo supposedly comes from the word mormulos, a Mediterranean food fish, but the connection is unclear. Mermillo gladiators did wear a distinctive, maybe fish-like helmet, the casis crista, a large curved bronze helmet with a crest on it. The Mermillo helmet had a face protector, a visor with grill work. You can't see it in this relief, but you can see the face protection in the equipment of this Mermillo reenactor. The provocator had a helmet with a different shape, also with a visor, but without a brim or crest often with two feathers, but not here. Both Mermillo and Provocator have a rectangular shield, a scutum. The Mermillo has a larger one made of wooden panels. In its center, it has a boss, an umbo, a knob made out of bronze to protect the handle. You can see the shield's umbo here too. When you go to a museum, it's fun to see objects from archaeology that you see pictured in other objects. When you're at the Yale Gallery, make sure to see the extremely rare surviving example of a scutum, mid-third century, from the excavations in the desert of Dura Europus. It's made of painted wood. The umbo is missing, but you see the empty circle where it was and you see a square shape painted around it, similar to the shape we see in the Mermillo shield umbo on our marble relief. Both fighters have a short sword, a gladius. That's the Mermillo's gladius. Here's the provocators. Both fighters are wearing an arm guard, monikai, made of leather or metal. That's the Mermillo's monikai. Here's the provocators. Both fighters have a metal leg guard for their left leg, an okrea, to protect their shin. The okrea has padding underneath fasciae. That's the provocator's okrea. Here's what you can see of the mermillos below his longer shield. We can see the provocator's balteus, his leather fighting belt and the back of the Mermillos Balteus. We see the provocator's loincloth, the subligaculum, his underwear, which is outerwear here. The provocator has one piece of equipment the Mermillo doesn't have, a rounded breastplate, a cardiofulox that protects his chest. Here you see a cardiofulox in the equipment of a reenactor 
of an Iberian infantryman. Again, what we have here is a fight between two different kinds of gladiators, Mermillo versus Provocator. It was fun or interesting to see one kind of gladiator fight against another with differing equipment and contrasting skills. The Mermillo had a bigger shield for more defense, but the Provocator was quicker with his smaller shield. Mermillo versus Provocator is the same combination as in a gladiator combat reenactment at the Xanthan Archaeological Park in Germany in 2003. A narrow inscription along the top of the relief tells us the names of the two fighters. This fight is Nymphoros versus Parthenopaeus. They are both from Cappadocia. Cappadocia is an area in East Central Asia Minor, north of Syria. This probably tells us that the funeral games were not held in Cappadocia. Where they are from is spelled out because they are from abroad. Both names are Greek and are known as gladiator and athlete names. Nymphoros comes from Greek nymphe, bride, and eros, sexual desire, bride's desire, pretty boy. Parthenopaeus is the name of an epic hero, one of the seven against Thebes. Gladiators like to use erotic, over-the-top names. Pro wrestlers in our culture likewise have absurd names like Hulk Hogan, Ravishing Rick Rude, Gorgeous George. The full inscription tells us one more thing. It reads, Nympharos apo Cappadocias palos alpha, Parthenopaios apo Cappadocias palos alpha. That is, Nympharos from Cappadocia, rank one, Parthenopaeus from Cappadocia, rank one. Gladiator schools had ranking for skill levels, and this is telling us that both these gladiators were first rank. The Latin word here is palos for rank, palos protos in Greek, palos primus in Latin. These two first rank gladiators commanded the highest fees. The family had paid for the best quality of gladiators for their funeral games. So what happened in this fight? Let's just guess and call the Mermillo Nymphoros and the Provocator Parthenopaeus. Four scenes in four panels apparently show us four different highlights of the contest. In the first scene in the upper left, Parthenopaeus is on the left and Nymphoros is on the right. They're face to face, left leg to left leg. In the second scene, upper right, the two have reversed positions. Nymphoros is on the left, and Parthenopaeus on the right is trying to get in on him. In the third scene, in the middle, Nymphoros is starting to win. Parthenopaeus's head is twisted around, but he's turned his back and is starting to run. It's no longer left leg to left leg. In the last scene, at the bottom, Nymphoros has defeated Parthenopaeus and stands over him, ready to strike and kill him. Because the relief is broken here, we don't see it, but this is the moment when the referees and the crowd might decide whether the loser, Parthenopaeus, fought well enough to have his life spared, or should Nymphoros go ahead and just kill him. We lose the drama of that moment in this relief, but it's been portrayed often in art, ancient and modern. This is a second century canteen from the Romano-Germanic Museum in Cologne in Germany that depicts a gladiator fight. We see a mermillo about to kill his opponent, another mermillo. The French painter Jean-Léon Jérôme painted this moment in a painting in 1872. A mermillo has defeated a retiarius, the kind of gladiator who fought with net and trident and is waiting for the decision as to whether he will kill him or not. At the end of a gladiator battle, when the spectators would decide whether the winning gladiator should kill or spare the loser, members of the crowd had the temporary illusion of having power over life and death. 
Maybe that was some consolation to the spectators of our battle here as they dealt with the death of their loved one in whose honor the funeral games were being held. When you're at the Yale Gallery to see the gladiator's relief, make sure to go upstairs to the European paintings and see another painting by Jérôme that shows the beginning of a gladiatorial show much, much grander than the one on the relief we've been looking at. We see several Mermillo gladiators just before the start of the contest, hailing Caesar as they are about to die. Thanks for watching.